start streaming. Excellent connection. Yay. I think it's working. All right. Today we've got a phone here from a local walk-in. This is a local walk-in. Guy came in named David. David was wearing like repairman clothes. And David said that his iPhone 10s fell into a commercial dishwasher, which is crazy. So um, I wasn't here. This is one that um, that I think uh, Ryan took in, and that's what he says. He says that David said that it's okay to do a video, and that what happened to his iPhone 10s is that it fell into a commercial dishwasher. Now, I think that, like, I used to be a commercial dishwasher. I don't know if you guys know this. I used to be a professional dishwasher, and I ran one of those big dishwashers. This was at a summer camp when I was 16, and I don't think the phone can really fall into a commercial dishwasher at all, because you gotta, like, lift open the big lid, and then you got to shove a giant rack full of dishes, close it, and then hit go. I think that you could intentionally put a phone in there, like, if you wanted to clean it. And I wonder what really happened. If we can get this working, I want to call up David, since he lives down the street, and get to the bottom of it. But we can't do that unless we can actually get this phone to turn on, because... According to David, phone was dropped into commercial dishwasher, overheated. The phone or the dishwasher? Do you know the phone or the dishwasher overheated? Um, the phone, okay. Pictures of children over the years, pictures and notes. Permission to make video. All right, so there we go. Let's take a look under the microscope to start us out to see what happens when phone meets commercial dishwasher. To the microscope, boom. All right, here we go. So I already took the board out. I already looked at this because I really didn't even believe this was a thing. And this is what happens. On this top side of the board, this all looks pretty normal for iPhone XS. So surely not a big deal. Now I split the board already. Dun, da, da, da. Oh, this is really, really ugly. Look at that. You got like some kind of blister thing going on here. The, the, this is bad. It's really not cool when your power management chip looks like, ugh, looks like some kind of, like it's get some kind of pimple disease. I mean, that's a nightmare. Look at that. Now, there's stuff under there. That is, I don't, I hope that's not a crack. If that's a crack, that's going to be extra bad news. But to me, it really looks more like a ketchup, ketchup stain. I think this phone's hit. Look at this. This is not, I mean, what kind of dishes would even get that dirty? I mean, even if you go to your home dishwasher and you take the plate that you put in the oven with a lasagna on it for four days, if you put it in a dishwasher, it never looks this bad. I think that some, I think that David was trying to clean this phone and intentionally put it in the dishwasher. Look at that. That is a lot of crud all under this chip here. Look at that. That's like really gross. What is this? Blood? Strawberry syrup? Ryan, I need you to come and lick this. It's for science. Just... <laughs> All right. So no, you're not gonna, you're not gonna, in the name of science, help us get to the bottom of, I mean, it's like pink. This is ketchup. I really want to know. I want to, I want to, we really need to be able to call this guy. Either that, he lives on West Bloomfield Road. How long would it take you to run to West Bloomfield Road, find out what's really going on, and come back? 
a half hour. Okay. I don't want, oh, this is really bad. Looks even worse over here. This is, this is all like salt water damage. I don't know. I can't tell if this commercial dishwasher is either a really good dishwasher or a really, really bad one. Look at that. All right. Who is it? Who is here? It's Katrina. Is she live? You can do some tape. It doesn't matter. All right, let's look at the other half of the board. Uh, the other half of the board, at least this part doesn't contain da data. All right, here we go. Katrina, can you drive Ryan over to West Bloomfield Road? Because we got to ask somebody a question. See, I rode my bike here, so we're kind of stuck. All right. Oh, okay. Well, all right. Step number one. Let's see what chat thinks. Chat, what is, is this, did David intentionally put his phone in the dishwasher to clean it and then said it fell in? Or do you think this is what dishwashers do to phones? What do you think? Cranberry sauce. Oh, all right. Uh, it's clean, has no COVID. All right. And Coke or coffee. Okay. All right, next step. I think that, that we're gonna have to at least give this one a solid cleaning with the toothbrush. Probably best to put this one through a trip through the ultrasonic. I think it'd be fun to put it in the ultrasonic and then try to call this guy and see if we can figure out what the real deal is. And, and you know how sometimes you just kind of get in a rut where you, you start to assume things based on the last case. The last two or three cases were I dropped my phone in the swimming pool. I dropped my phone in the hot spring by accident. I had my phone on, near the hot tub, but it definitely didn't go in. And then you get the phone working and you're recovering the pictures. And the last picture on the camera roll is underwater selfie. And you dropped your phone underwater and magically accidentally took a selfie. That's just, that's seems a little sus. All right, look at this, cleaning right up. Now this is what you guys that are trying to buy, out there trying to buy a commercial dishwasher, this is how you can save a lot of money. Go down to the, go down to the dollar store and get an old man's toothbrush like this one and some alcohol. And look at that beautiful job, toothbrush and alcohol. In fact, this is such a beautiful job that I am going to pass on doing an ultrasonic cleaning, at least right now. This is good enough to do a little light troubleshooting. All right, there we go. Now we're going to move on to the DC power supply. But first, a word from our sponsor. And our sponsor is none other than, uh, please hold, who is our sponsor? Who did they get to sponsor them? iPad Rehab Practical Board Repair School. Come and see us for training. Now here's why I'm going to talk about training here for my little commercial. It's because this is a little bit confusing. In September, there are two courses that are back to back. This is a unique opportunity that we have not done before. So in September, you can't really quite tell from the scheduler, but September 13th for five days, we have our standard practical board repair school. And that class is about half full right now. So there's still about half of that class left. And I put that class there from the 13th through the 17th because it was gonna be the week before the really, really cool class, which is MacBook class. So we're doing our second and probably the last one we're gonna do. We're having Tim, the amazing Tim Herman, TCRS Circuit Tim, fly all the way from California again to spend five days here with us. To, and he's a really, really gifted kid who knows more about MacBooks than anyone I know. So we have built a course to lead you through 
all of the structure that you need to troubleshoot today's MacBook problems. We're going to be fixing MacBooks. The last guys that came when we did this before fixed a ton of MacBooks and left with a lot of fixed stuff. You're supposed to go dig up MacBooks and bring them and fix them. So really, really fun, special course that we're probably not going to do again. And I put this course on September 20th. So there's September 13th, five days, the weekend, which we, you know, we got two people saying we want to stay also for the weekend. So we might even do a five plus two plus five option for you guys. But I want to put that out there to kind of highlight, since it's weird on the scheduler, that the September class is back to back with the September MacBook course. Really good for international folks that want to come for like a chunk of time. You can knock out both of these courses back to back. And that is the word from our sponsor. Go to iPadRehab.com, click the training tab, and then you can sign up for MacBook course or regular practical board repair school. All right, the end. And now we're going to head back to David's ketchup stain, I don't know what happened to it board. All right, so here we go. So now let's go ahead and put it on the DC power supply. And today I'm gonna show you guys the, um, uh, the Chanley Super Cam, right? So here's their new version. The old one was absolute definite crap. Nobody liked it. In all of our reviews with students, it was the worst one, but they have made significant improvements here on the Super Cam. Um, we will let you know the preference. So far, when we've asked people that have come by, the preference is still for the Seat Compact Pro uh, with the Mac Pro lens. However, the SuperCam is really great for doing videos. So here's the SuperCam interface, and I'm going to do a dedicated video to show the difference between the SuperCam and the Seek. Um, they're uh, they're just going to have like some differences more in, in how you use them and some differences in resolution. But they're, but this is a, this is a perfectly fine option uh, if you need something that can uh, project or somewhere that you can save an image on a computer, something like that, then SuperCam will work. All right, so this is what it looks like here, uh, and I'm going to now connect the DC power supply. So whenever you're doing thermal imaging stuff, don't connect it to power first. First, look around. See how you can see the, the sensor reflecting back? There's nothing getting hot here because I'm not applying any, any juice to it yet. So this is just sitting here. You know, this is just this straight up board right here on the desk. And as you look at it, it should all be one color, one temperature but it's not, right? So that's sort of the normal reflection of the sensor on just the different emissivity of the components that are on the board. Shiny stuff is gonna look a little bit more reflective. Okay, so now we are gonna connect the DC power supply and see what's what. One day, when I'm all grown up, I will have YouTube show you the DC power supply and the thermal camera and the multimeter. That's my dream. Maybe that's what, maybe that's what I'll do for like when I turn 50 in three years. Okay, so now what we see connected to DC power is a little bit of a current leak. It's going to about 30, 50 milliamps, hanging out 30, 50, 60, 30, 50, 60. It looks a little bit like that. So now we got to go find here what is getting hot. Aha, so if we cruise around the board, we can see that there looks like a legitimate spot of heat here at the crusty looking power management ship. So that's not good. I'm flipping the board a little bit, kind of giving it a little bit of up and down. And let's keep one looking over here. And aha, so we got two kind of crazy things going on. Now this super cam will Will it zoom? Let's see. We can unhook it and kind of manually move it up and down, but let's see. How, how close can we zoom in? Well, that's really close. Let's see. Can we focus or no? Oh, there we go. Yeah, we can focus a little bit. All right, so we've got some steady 
hot spot right there at that chip, which I think is one of the like uh, flash drivers. And then we've got this pulsing bit right here that seems to be pulsing, pulsing, pulsing along with the DC power supply. So the DC power supply is also going like 50, 80, 50, 80, 50, 60, 50, 80. Pulse, pulse, pulse. So let's look up that guy as well. And we're gonna look up this guy because we gotta see what line is causing that leak, right? I'm gonna flip the board over to the other side where the connectors are. And that to me just looks like the sensor reflecting back to itself. All right, so there you go, guys. Chat, have you ever seen this weird thing pulsing before? I have not. And have you ever seen one of these guys get hot before? Let's see if we can find out. All right, iPad Rehab, can you please put some repair tools on Kiku app? so that many repairers in Ghana and other African countries can order them very fast. I do not know the answer to that, but I will have Katrina look right into it. Katrina, you wanna look up Kiku app? You wanna look up what Kiku app is? A way to sell stuff to tools to the fine people in Africa, in African countries? A Kiku is not an African country. No, no. <laughs> yeah, a lot of records. Ryan, maybe you could look up Kiku app here. You're, you're like app generation. Yeah, that'd be fine. We'll be happy to do that. All right, how much did that thermal camera cost? This thermal camera, I w let's look it up. That is a very good question, and I think that we should know the answer to it. So we will look that up. Um, and see how same or different it is. So let's see, it's called SuperCam X. It's not something that we have chosen to sell because it's okay, you know, but it's, I mean, it's, it's fine. I, I think it's just perfectly fine. It's a little bit, uh, you know, takes up room on your desk and you have to jump through these software hoops and install drivers and open software, blah, blah. So it's, it's not nearly as, easy as just plugging in the seek into the bottom of your phone that you always have next to you. So let's see if we can find out where, what is the price on that? Anybody know? Who knows? Somewhere in China, I'm gonna, it looks like euros, about 600, 700 euros. <laughs> Ryan just said, what? China does not use that's euros. That's that is, yeah, it's pretty expensive. Yeah, yeah. It's, a lot of money. it's more expensive than the Seat Compact Pro. Okay, so let's see. Anybody, anybody know? Kiku app is a drop shipping middleman provider, says Brian. Uh, let's see. Mm, nobody, nobody. Who who's bought one of these? Anybody? Nobody. All right, we're moving on. Supercam is great if you are connected to a computer and doing videos. Um, it's not as convenient as the handheld one, but as far as, as actually showing you where heat is and stuff, I will do a side-by-side -side video with prices and stuff like that so that you can, can uh, figure it out. Uh, Rodrigo says, surely it runs a Bitcoin miner with the camera software. Surely, yes. <laughs> That would be hilarious, and it could possibly be true. All right, we're gonna look up these guys, right? Remember this guy, Mr. Pulsey McPulse face? And then over here, we got this hot little number right here, which I think is one of the LED drivers. Let's go to ZXW and see if we can look those suckers up. Where are you, ZXW? Show yourself. Yay, ZXW is in the house. All right, let's flip this board over. I like, I love that Katrina's hearing is the same as mine, which is if you, if there's a fan on, if anybody's running water, it's just forget it. I have absolutely no idea. I'm like, I just want to let you know that I have no idea what you said, but I'm not sure that you really will do something for the third Yeah, she's like something, Af Africa, something. Yep. Okay, so we've got this LED chip that is LED boost out, LED driver. 
strobe driver warm, many burst, PMU to strobe, wide telephone, tele, telephoto strobe driver enable, all of these lines, strobe module NTC, which is negative temperature coefficient. And we can guess, we could, should go look it up on a schematic if we had one around, but we can guess this thing sounds like a flash chip, right? It's, a, it's going to provide that burst of light from LEDs or LED flash. Not required to boot, so we could take it off. Now, I'm not a huge fan of just ripping chips off of the board, just see hot, remove hot. That's not, um, that's not great. What you should do is locate a short. Now, this is going to be challenging because we don't have a full short to ground. We have like a little bit of a leak, so we may not be able to do that. Let's look up our other chip. Where are you, flashy McFlash face? There he is, U1401. So let's do the same thing. So looking at what's going on under this guy, I see some ground, I see some blue, which is not connected, not care. And then we've got this guy here, I2C4 AP. That sounds important, right? And we've got I2C4 AP clock. So those are gonna be a data pair. And then I see power, which is PP1V8IO. That is like, ugh, you know, what's going on with this chip? It looks a lot like an EEPROM chip. You know, like it looks a lot like a, uh, a chip that is, that is taking that 1V8 power line and using it to signal data back to the CPU. For what? I don't know. You know, we could look up on the schematic and try to see if there was any context that would tell us what's going on. We can click on this I2C4 and just see what other chips, usually this is gonna be a signal communication bus from the CPU, there's the CPU, a little red spot, going out to just this guy, and anywhere else, any other chips? Well, I don't see anybody. What else is on that line? I don't see it going anywhere else. So we would need to look on the schematic. But this would be something that I'm not going to just rip off the board because I don't know for sure that this one's not required to boot. It looks a lot like an EEPROM, which if it's the AP EEPROM is required to boot. I don't think that it is because it doesn't say EEPROM on any of those lines. And where is the EEPROM in the 10S? I don't remember off the top of my head. I'll have to look it up. All right, what we're gonna do first is we're gonna go after this guy where the majority of the heat was, and we're gonna guess that maybe we have some kind of a partial short on that 1V8 IO line. So first order of business is we're going to probe around here and see, check out VDD main, see if anything is low uh, on one of these outputs. So these guys are all gonna be kind of like talking to this chip. Let's go check it out with the multimeter. All right, was this logic board ultrasonic washed? If a commercial dishwasher is the same as an ultrasonic, then yes. If not, it was the good old toothbrush and alcohol method so far. We could go put it in ultrasonic, but you know, in fact, maybe it would be fun to do that. Maybe we should go drop it in ultrasonic and then see if that changes anything. All right, wow, this is my first live stream. I saw a mini doc about Jessa a week ago and I've been watching videos. Well, Sir Cheeseball, we were very glad that you jumped in on the stream. All right, now we gotta speed up here because I gotta ride my bike home and I'm wearing a black shirt. So if you want me to survive, because I am too inexperienced with things like running and bike riding to be prepared and Katrina will probably freak out if I ride my bike back home in the dark with a black shirt on. That's bad. All right, let me turn off. Where is ZXW? Let me find it. There we go. Bye-bye, ZXW. All right, let's just probe around here and see if we can figure out a line that is a little bit low. It might be a challenge because there's not very many places for us to probe really under these chips to really kind of check out these lines. 0.5 doesn't seem low. 0.5 doesn't seem low. 0.342, that's going to be main, which is normal. Uh, 
I don't see anything that is low. All right, we're going to look around. Okay, we are going to take off the offending LED drivers because we see a lot of corrosion there. And we're going to guess that there's some sort of bridge maybe between main and one of these LED output lines or something like that that's allowing there to be a little bit of a leak to ground. So we don't need these guys, so we're going to just delete them and see what happens from there. I wonder how long it would take me to ride my bike over to David's house, which I think would be pretty cool because I'm pretty sure that this guy's address That is, that is totally on the way home. I'm pretty sure. I'm going to go, I'm going to go visit him. That would be, it would be really cool if I was smart enough to figure out how to live stream from my phone, head down the road, go stop over at David's house, and get him to tell us about being a commercial dishwasher repair guy. Because that sounds pretty cool. I, mean, I would think if you were a restaurant and the dishwasher stopped working, that, that would be a pretty big deal. And it would also really, really suck for whoever had to wash all the restaurant dishes by hand. That would, that would really, really be tough. I remember working at one restaurant when I was 18, and on like one of the busiest Fourth of July weekends, it was in a Ocean City resort town. Uh, they just flat out ran out of all kinds of things. And one of the things this restaurant ran out of was clean silverware. And the manager was like, well, you're just going to have to tell people, <laughs> just, we don't have any more forks. You're going to have to just um, eat this $30 plate of crab meat with a spoon. Because and it was just crazy, I remember um, that we were having to like just try to go wash individual spoons. I wonder if the dishwasher had, had actually broken. Maybe. I don't know. I wonder if that place is still around. That place had some, had some stories. Oh, it's Sam. Hey, Sam, what's up? Oh, I gotta ride my bike home, but I'm doing a live stream right now. I gotta fix this phone first. And it was in a commercial dishwasher. So it might be a while. I see that you're not a subscriber. <laughs> it just says, okay. <laughs> All right, I mean, I gotta ride my bike home, so I don't know. Okay, bye. Kids these days. Look at that, Ryan. Sam isn't even a subscriber. He has absolutely no idea and absolutely no interest. Couldn't be more bored. All right. This is all cleaned up. Now we're going to see. That looks pretty corroded right there under that one spot. Oh, that looks pretty corroded. Okay. Let's see. Do we have the same DC power... Current consumption, yay or nay. All right. Mark went to a restaurant with friends, and he had the steak, and he had to wait 30 minutes for a knife. You know who came to course one time? A guy that, that was a repairman of uh, grocery store refrigeration. And that was another thing where it was like, you can charge whatever you want. And he said it had been, like, you know, pretty, pretty lucrative all his, all his uh, career, and he still continued to like it. All right, let's go back to the thermal camera. With those chips off, we still have the, about the same DC power current consumption. Let's see if we can focus this sucker up again. Let's see if we can make that pretty. There we go. Okay. So we see that like flashing that does seem to be kind of like where our 
our, you know, we don't have any leaks over here anymore. We've got that going on. That is that mystery data chip. And then let's look over here. And then likely that 1v8 power output is somewhere around there. Maybe. It's hard to, it's hard to know when it's like such a tiny little, this is like a 20, 30 milliamp pulse. All right. What I'd like to do is measure in voltage the 1v8 line to see whether or not it is actually dropping to zero or not. So let's do that before we go crazy. Let's put this back on and let's go see if we can actually measure. Let's go look it up. Let's get rid of thermal and let's go to ZXW and let's see if we can look up, and figure out what is up with that. All right, so I'm talking about this line right here, PP, 1v8. All right, PP1v8. Where else does PP1v8 go? Ooh, PP1v8, if it is indeed problematic, goes all kinds of places. So let's look over here and see if we can find a nice, beautiful spot to measure it here on C1810. So let's check out to see if PP1v8 is zero volts or pulsing or what. Wouldn't it be great if I could share with you guys exactly what the multimeter says, but I can't figure out how to do that. All right, let's see. Multimeter says 0, 1.3, 0, 1.5, 0, 1.5, 0, 1.4, 0, 1.5, 1.5, 0, 1.5. So our PP1V8IO line is pulsing. Do, 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 do and it is acting like it is unable to maintain that 1.8 volts. Now, where does this line come from? We'd have to look it up, but it is likely an output right here of the power management chip. And the power management chip itself, let's see. Power management chip, are you corroded in that corner? Maybe. Can you guys see that? I don't know if that's up for you guys or not. Nope. Let's see. Let's look here in this very corner of the power management chip itself. So let's shut that down for a minute. So where PP1V8IO begins is right in the corner of this chip. Now this chip is underfilled, but it looks really rough. So that is a possibility, but that's still pretty intact. Could there be two lines bridged together? Because it's not a full short to ground there. Could be. All right. Let's go ahead and take a diode mode reading to see what is the resistance to ground. Is this line actually short to ground or is it bridged into something else? So let's see. What do we have on this PP1V8IO line that is pretty much the brainstem that goes everywhere. So let's go to that same cap and see what it is. All right, so it looks like PP1V8 in general, we're just looking for some place where it's labeled 0.255 more or less. So let's go measure it. We can measure it in one spot because if a line is short anywhere, the line is short everywhere. So let's figure this out. All right, we've got 0.247. It's not short to ground. Well, that doesn't mean that PP1V8IO isn't bridged into something else. But let's look and see what all our possibilities are, kind of looking around. And we have U3700, which is a camera chip, it looks like. We have U4400, which is Yogi. Mama Bear, Rigel, VDD Boost, Romeo, Romeo, a bunch of Romeo. All right, so I think that's audio. I guess, I don't even remember. And then where else does it go? So those two guys, and then it goes to our U1401. I'd really like to look up U1401 
on a schematic. So let's see. I don't think I have on this computer the schematics, but I'm going to try. I'm going to try and see what I can figure out here. Where would it be? Let's see if we can get lucky. Oh, yeah. I think I downloaded something to this computer a while ago that I can go for it on a hunt. Yes, it's in a folder called Bathroom Key. If you've been to the course, then you know what that folder is all about. Hey, there we go. In Bathroom Key folder is iPhone 10s schematic. And let's see if we can find U1401. And then let's see if we can, if we can make a window about it. Ah, no matches were found. What? Acrobat Reader has recovered one or more documents that were not saved. Forget it. Oh, this is just the bottom board. All right, let's see. We're going to have to go, like, on a manual hunt for this thing. All right, let's see if we can make a window so that you guys can come along on this blind hunt along with me. So we are going to make a new one, which is called Window Today. And we're going to say, okay. And we're going to say, yes, make it be this schematic. And we'll stick it over here. And we'll embiggen it like that. And we will go on a hunt. All right, so now i got to go back to it. All right, so if I type in U1401, it doesn't seem to find anything. U1401 is not home. Nobody's there. All right, so if we go back to ZXW and we look around and say, can I find, let me just see if it can find I2C4 underscore AP. Maybe it can do that. I2C4. How about that? No. Boo. This phone's an iPhone 10s, right? Yeah. Well, that stinks. Did I not spell it right? I2C4. Yeah, that's it. I2C4. All right, let's look up PP1V8IO instead. PP1V8 underscore IO. Okay, it looks like we can't text search anything, so that kind of stinks. What's this? PP1V8 uh, Hall Effect Sensor. Not it. Mm, not it. We're just going to cruise around and see if we can figure it, just find it on our own. Like in the old days when you couldn't search anything. I think I'm going to go back to the, take it from the top, though. Take it from the top. Let's see if we can find, let's see, what is this? Nope. Next page. Let's go to, like, the CPU and see if we can find that is all Wi-Fi stuff. Nope. That is all RF stuff. Nope, nope, nope. Nope. Nope, this is super boring. RF, radio, RF, radio, radio, radio. Don't care about baseband, baseband, don't care, baseband, don't care, baseband, don't care. Don't care, don't care, don't care, don't care, don't care. Is this just the bottom board? Mm. Mm. Diet Coke. The Wi-Fi chip is my new favorite chip. Look at that! That's pretty legendary. Yeah, it is. Pretty legendary. Yes. That is my new favorite chip. I have never seen this before. The iPhone XS Wi-Fi chip is named Diet Coke. Let's have a moment of silence. You know, if you have ever been to the course and you've seen me years ago drinking 12 or 14 Diet Cokes a day. Yeah, this sucks. This whole schematic is bottom board only. It's nothing but RF stuff. So that is not going to help at all. That explains everything. Mm -hmm. If you love baseband problems, you are in love. If you don't, then too bad. Well, that stinks. Boo hiss. Boo! Ooh, yes. All right. Strikeout. I didn't think I had an iPhone XS schematic. Now it makes all, 
No, this wasn't. All right, let's see what happens if I try and find another one. What is similar? Let's look up the good old iPhone 10 and see if we can find something similar. All right, does this carry over iPhone 10? Yeah, it does. MLB top. Major League Baseball top. Sweet. Top word is top word is the best word in the words. Top word. All right. I two C four. Show me. I two C four. Searching, searching, searching. It looks like it's what? What is it finding now? It's finding the I two C four. It's finding I D three. That is some crazy. All right, let's look up U1401. No, no luck in the iPhone 10. Uh, I2C4. Give me a hint. Oh, here we go. AP I2C4. This is not the iPhone 10s that we're working on. This is the iPhone 10. All right, as expected, we've got that PP1V8IO, the top power line, and then it is creates I2C4 clock and data. But where do they go? What do they do? Aha, I2C4, here we are. This is the CPU. And that makes sense, right? CPU is gonna be the you know talking chip on this communication bus. So this is the beginning. What else does it do? Where does it go? Do we get any kind of a hint? Does it say anything? So SEP I2C. Secure Enclave processor, mm, that sounds important. Uh, okay, what else? Give, we're looking for hints, the little hints that are gonna be on this mic. Okay, here we go. This is the companion matching chip. U1490 is a match because we can see it's got the same stuff going on. Power, PP1V8IO, and nothing else except for these two lines. So this chip is you know, storing a piece of information that the CPU is asking about. So sounds important, right? So like what, you know, this is like I told you guys, is it acts like an EEPROM, although I don't see the word EEPROM here, it would be, you know, chip is under power, chip's got ground, and the chip can then answer in, you know, digital language, the CPU when it says, what's your secret code, All right? So it's plugging into a chip, a section of the CPU called SEP, Secure Enclave Processor is what it sounds like. So I don't think that we're gonna, and it doesn't do anything else. The whole existence of this line is to just say, what's the secret code, buddy? Ding, ding. It's the lion sleeps at night, right? Okay, so I'm gonna guess that we're gonna need to have this guy. However, it's also the thing that's pulsing. And uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to very gently pick it up, look for corrosion under there, see if we can relieve this pulsing or our leak. If not, we're gonna you know, save it. We'll probably reball it and put it back on the board. So that's what we're gonna have to do with this, which is gonna put me in danger of having to ride my bike in the dark with my black shirt on. All right, what do you guys think? Chat, does that sound like a logical plan that we're gonna take this thing off now and, and then uh, save it rather than throw it away? Because it sounds, sounds pretty uh, potentially important. All right. I have a 10S schematic searchable. Would you like me to send it to you? Yes, I certainly would like you to uh, hang on to that and not distribute it. However, if uh, you wanted to make sure that your copy is legitimate, then you could send it along and I'll make sure it's legitimate for you. Um, honestly, we really don't need that. Um, this, is, this is exactly how you operate when you don't have a schematic. So there's a lot of schematics that are, that, that to be honest, I haven't bothered to track down, you know, ones that are out there. And it's because it's pretty rare that you, 
that you need that level of detail. And when you do like this, I'm 100% confident that this chip is talking just to the CPU and it is containing a piece of information. That's all that, you know, from a practical standpoint, right? That's what this chip's doing. Can we take it off the board and throw it away? Uh, probably not. You know, in order to be sure, we'd have to do an experiment. But we're going to, that's, that's all we're looking for here is when I look around at this corrosion, can I just knock this chip off and not care? Or what is it likely doing, right? The one you showed is six pin. It is, but they're all doing nothing, right? There's only four important pins, right? Let's look back at ZXW to remind ourselves. Let's see. Can you guys see ZXW? Where is it? Let's see. Here we go. Yes. So the chip that's kind of going blinky, 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 U1401 instead of U1490. But look, see how there's four grounds there and the blue two no stuffs, right? There's really only four important ones. Power, A1, clock, and data. Data, clock, and ground. So it's the same as that little four guy that we saw, right? Because these don't do anything. They go to the chip, to the CPU, nowhere else. You know, maybe this piece of information that it, that it carries is not important for it booting up. But because it's plugging into the CPU in the 10 in a spot that says... SEP, it could be. So can we throw this chip away? No. All right, we're going to take it off, see what it looks like under there. We're going to be gentle, and we're, we're going to have to ultimately reball it and put it back on. So that's where we're going with this. And this is a great example of what practical board repair looks like, right? Okay. So we do want to kind of pay attention to the orientation of this guy. And look under there. Now it could be that this guy's flashing for absolutely no reason because our problem is that 1v8 IO is bridged to something else elsewhere. But yeah, right there, you know, we all we care about on this chip is really the bottom corner, right? And here on the bottom corner, it Looks like you have some kind of uh, bad dentistry gone wrong, right? Look at that. There's stuff there. Okay, so we got to remember our orientation. There's a little bit of a dot on the chip, but that's going to come off. So that dot there is kind of the important part of the chip. I'm going to try to well, maybe make it a little have a shape rather than relying on that. All right, so it's got to go back on with the crud there in that bottom corner. All right, enough messing around. It's time to take this thing off, clean it up, and see whether or not that cures our little leak that we've got. Time to get down to business. All right. Ryan, did you steal my hook tweezers? I mean, borrow. Possible. Right now, I'm pissed off because I have poop ground screw that I finally got lucky enough to get to a store a couple of charges. And the person, the letter of the day, passed away within the last six and it's at his residence. Does he live in Honey Eye Falls? Because let's round up a posse. That is rough. How long would it take you to run to Colorado? Probably a what? Probably a... Probably. <laughs> Yay! Look at that! It is the hook tweezers. All right. Let's get this show on the road. All right. Our caps around it shorted. Well, I don't know, and I'm not going to bother to check because PP1V8IO is not short. And that is the only power line that goes under this guy. All right, so we're going to take it off. Can you guys see that? Hopefully so. All right, 
right, there's our dude. And we're gonna ultimately have to reball that guy. And if he is important, we have to hope that there's no actual damage to his important piece of information, which is a little bit of a long shot. This one? Is it labeled for a bro? Yeah. What the? What do you mean? Well, there's you like, well, yeah, there's. Really? What do you mean? How, what have you been doing with these 11 pros all day? Look at this, 11 pro right there. I see, because they've all been easy. Just. Is it blue? Do you have this one? Wait. All right. We are now going to clean up these pads here. All those big brown ones. Got to get a bigger. I got to get a bigger tip for that one. All right. Is the word Discord? Censored. Discord? Who the heck am I? Don't ride in the dark. Call Uber. Oh, isn't that adorable? They think that there's Ubers around here. No. But you're in luck. I have an 11 one right here. There you go. You want to catch? Really? Okay. Ready? Yes. It's heavy. Nice! Looks like that was way too easy. Yeah. All right. We're going to move back this little resistor that I nudged before. We check to see what's up with that. Oh, wow, you're still alive. Uh, that, doesn't, that's, that doesn't sound good. <laughs> oh, that's great. Oh, you haven't you haven't fixed uh, David's puke dishwasher phone? All right. This guy. Oh, look at that. It does have some corrosion right under there. But that doesn't look like the important side. So, mystery. All right. I'm going to move that, I'm going to nudge this little resistor right back. Why would you censor the string? I don't know what that means. Do you have my, um, what's that thing called? <coughs> the brick thing, the, what the hell is that thing called? The Omnivice. Uh, what? I think it's over there. I'll come hunt it down. All right, here we go. Uh, I usually miss the live streams and watch them from the start when they're finished. Well, what time is it in Melbourne, Australia? Seems like it would be tomorrow. All right. Let's see what happens on the good old DC power supply. Will we still have 1B8IO pulsing because it is bridged into something else? But what? We don't know. Let's find out. Or was it bridged into one of those I2C lines? All right, same behavior. It's still pulsing. So now we will ultimately put that guy back on, but we're not going to do that until we figure out why we have this pulsing, pulsing. With that chip off, though, we might be able to get a better hint. So let's get back to the thermal camera. Where are you, thermal camera? Show yourself. Thermal camera. So if you are just hopping on this stream, 
No, my thermal camera software stopped working. No. We are using the SuperCam today, and we are looking at a board that is been in a commercial dishwasher accidentally, according to local David, who I would like to ride my bike over to his house and say, what the heck is going on with your phone? But first, we got to fix it. And in order to fix it, first, we have to restart this, I guess. This is what the SuperCam stuff is like. Open the software. Okay, we'll do. All right, wake up. Hello. I'm starting to not like this thing for streaming now. Like, it's a real pain if you have to do troubleshooting of the stupid software. Like, <sighs> Come on, wake it up. Wake it up, show me. I'm going to have to X out of that. I'm going to close this. I'm going to close that. I'm going to, aha, I found it. Open that. Let's do this. Yay! We're back in business. All right. So now we can see. All right. We got rid of our pulsy, pulsy McPulse face, right? That guy is, is done. And now we're looking around to see if there's something else. All right, so we can see the sensor. See just the sensor reflecting back on itself. Sensor reflecting back on itself. Sensor reflecting back on itself. And what else? Let's clip it. Hard to say. Yeah, this one's this. These are really tough because it's hard to differentiate the sensor from like the the little thing that says this is the hot spot can be kind of kind of distracting a little bit. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect and disconnect DC power myself to kind of pulse it. So I'm doing this pulsing now like this. Click, click, click. Right here. Dit, 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 dit. And we can see that we have a response there in the power management chip. But that is, is often going to just be kind of like the thinnest the thinnest wire necessarily, not necessarily where it is joined. Okay. All right. Flip the board. Anything else that we can see? All right. Pulse, yeah, pulse, I, pulse. I pulse, pulse, pulse. Anything going on there? Pulsing. Flip it. Pulse. All right, so for just looking for heat, which we're just looking at a 20 to 30 milliamp leak. And what the only thing that we can see is right there in the power management chip. All right, but we think what's going on here is that PP1VAIO is likely bridged or connected into a neighboring line that both have about the same resistance to ground. So we so it's not a short to ground, it's just some sort of a leak. Is that cross bridge happening within or under the power management chip? Maybe. But it could also just be showing up there as heat because it's someplace else on that line. Or it could be some other line entirely because we don't have a way with a multimeter to detect a line that is bridged into another matching line with the same resistance to ground. So let's kind of do a little bit of exploring. So we're going to just check to see. First question, does PP1V8IO, is it generated from that spot right there in the center of the power management chip? So let's go on a hunt and find out. So we saw that heat was kind of really coming around here, I think. 
Yeah, kind of midway up right around here. Now let's look and drill in and see what's going on. Uh, how about PP1VA always? Let's check to see what the resistance is on that line because we're still a little bit just hunting around. And let's see. All right, PP1V8 always. We are going to see what your resistance to ground is over here on, let's see. All right, PP1V8 always is the one, two, three, four. That doesn't seem normal. Let me show you guys what we're doing on ZXW. PP1VA always. Let's check you out. ZXW. ZXW. Man, this is tiny. There it is. ZXW. All right. So we're measuring, we're still trying to figure out what's going on. PP1V8 always, why are we picking PP1V8 always? Because we're looking at, you know, we're suspecting that PP1V8 IO, and then we're saying, where was the, that little pulse, pulse, pulse of heat? And it was kind of in the center-ish, right around here. So let's just see, is, do we see PP1V8 um, IO? No, we don't, but we see, PP1V8 always. So, okay, well, PP1V8 always is that is the line that actually feeds the power button. So let's see if PP1V8 always just, what's up with it? So let's take a uh, diode mode reading to ground. And I was doing that. Where does it go? Over here, because we've got this spot right here. So we should have um, a whole bunch of grounds and then above that little T3 spot, we should be able to count 1, 2, 3 over, and we should be getting 0.539 at PP1V8 always. So let's see. Are we? All right, so we're going to uh, put the red probe here. Let's pull it up. And this should all be ground, right? And then 1, 2, 3. Yeah, so one, two, three. We're getting zero, zero, zero. Zero, zero, zero. So PP1V8 always then is short to ground. Let's make sure that we're not kind of getting trolled by some weird thing on ZXW. Let's go to that PP1V8 always resistor and just make sure that we're getting, that we're on the right line. Because this is. Um, a little bit. Now, I'm not sure what the connection is between PP1V8 always and PP1V8 IO. Maybe they're a branch. I'm not sure. All right, so PP1V8 always is here on the right side of R3330. So let's go over there and see what is the resistance to ground on R3330. Let's go find out. All right, red probe on ground. All right, so it's definitely zero, zero, zero. All right, so now we have a problem to solve that may or may not be related to PP1V8IO or why that other chip was flashing, which we'll need to ultimately put back on the board. And we have it right here in safekeeping for later, if, if we ever get to that point. So let's go on a hunt. Why is PP1V8 always short to ground? So my guess is going to be it's the heavy, 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 disgusting corrosion that is clearly around this guy here. So Tigris is going to be one of the two destinations for PP1V8 always. The other one is the power button. So when you prompt the phone to boot by plugging in the charger, that is ultimately telling Tigris right there, or Yangtze in the iPhone XS, it's telling that chip, go ahead and start the boot up sequence. So PP1V8 always should always be present. And I'm gonna guess that there's severe corrosion under there because I can see it, right? I can see all of this, you know, terrible crud. And that is one of the few places that PP1V8 always goes. Let's check to make sure that we're not overlooking something. So let's go see. 
PP1V8 always begins at the power management chip. Oh, here we go. Begins, oh, you can't really see that. That's kind of weird. PP1V8 always begins. <laughs> it's possible. Ding. <laughs> Inside U2700's power management chip. And then it goes to this resistor right here, which is R3330. And let's see, where else does it go? It goes through the interposer board and then over here on the bottom board and then flip it over and let's see, I don't see anything here. It goes to a single cap there. And then if we click the other side of the resistor, aha, it does indeed go to U3300, which is the Yangtze chip, the Tigris equivalent, and that's where there's a ton of corrosion. So we're going to just replace this chip. This is also a required chip, so we can't just take it off. How do we know that? Because we can look to see what does it do. System alive, I2C0, SMC. That's a, I2C0 is the main brain, brain stem. I2C4 is like the fourth one down. So we can't not have a destination on the main brain stem that's connecting battery with main. So this guy's job is to generate the main power rail. Without functioning Yangtze, you're not gonna have a main power rail. Okay, so let's replace that guy. And now it's like legit getting dark. So I'm getting a little bit worried. Okay, what should I do? What would WWRD? What? No, I don't. Oh, that's what I would do too. Listen, Ryan, if I don't make it, can you fix everything else that's still in queue? I mean, you don't have to do it like in one day, but like ultimately, if I don't make it, I'd hate for anybody to not get their data recovered because I was too dumb. Okay. <laughs> All right, we're going to take this off. You know what's really sad is that I actually bought a bright yellow, like, coat um, that is for, for being able to ride my bike home. This is something that I never really thought about, like, as a difference between running hobby and bike hobby. That if you're, if you're going to be a bike commuter, you have to worry about stuff like dark okay that looks that is not normal this is blood I want to go to David's house I'm going to just try to make it to David's house I'm going to spend the night there and he's going to tell me what really happened to this phone which I think look at this what do you think this is this Looks like blood. I think David cut himself, bleeding all over his phone. He was losing so much blood he couldn't think straight. Shoved his phone in the dishwasher, put the lid down, gave it a one quick cycle. That's what I think happened. All right. Let's clean this up. Let's clean this up because we may have to have another word from our sponsor. I want to know, it's, you can almost never actually find out what really happened to a lot of these phones, but this guy lives in this town. We are going to find out the truth. The truth will be known one way or another. I will camp out in David's driveway until we figure out what really happened what is this this is in every video everybody's like what's the what's the stuff what's the green stuff what's the red stuff this one even if we never fix this phone we will find out just what kind of pink sludge this is the real pink slime do you remember pink slime like this you know hamburger was like tainted with pink slime do you remember that? 
you do? Your mom was a big pink slime, like, fan? Was she a fan of it? Was it like, yeah, get their own? She's not a fan? All right. Now we got to stick another Yancey on here. And I happen to have one right here. Excellent. When I went and did uh, one of the Good Morning America pieces, they were using that whole pink slime as, like, the reason why the news has to be so careful with what they say now because of, I think ABC had to had to actually pay pay out like a lot over the dumb pink slime. This is my favorite chip. I mean, it's my second favorite chip. My first favorite chip is the Diet Coke chip, which I did not know existed. So today's already a win. I had no idea that there was a Diet Coke chip. In fact, I'm thrilled about that. Um, but the reason why Yangtze and Equivalent are my favorite is because of this missing spot. See how it's got a little hole there? So you never have to really remember which way the dot goes. Because there's always going to be that little, little gap hole that's going to help you get it right in the right spot, which is just like that. Beautiful. Now look at that ugly chip. That is some disgusting, that dishwasher is worth worthless dishwasher. How to know you need a new dishwasher. If your dishes come out looking like that, you need a new dishwasher. Unacceptable. All right, let's get this sucker back on here and see what's what. Good job, says, oh, do you speak... Um, Russian? Yeah. Can you read the Russian alphabet at least? Could you please? Well, tell him. I mean, I, 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 certainly Mason's not watching this, this YouTube channel, but if he would, he could help me think. I can get the, the sepra, but the last letter, that is a mystery. It looks Greek. This looks more Greek. Good job, Mr. Russian Greek guy. Thanks. All right. It's clearly FBI evidence. All right. Test short before pudding. Nah, I'm not doing that. It's obviously short. It doesn't matter if I test it or not. There is no universe where 1v8 always was short anywhere other than this guy. All right. Let's see. Can you guys see this? I'm from Russia. Well, at least I got the right country, but you're, it looks like the first letter of your last name is Pi, so that's why I was going with the brief Russian thing. But you have to give me a hint. Ah, Sergei Pascal. It's the Pi makes a P. I mean, that's pretty good. All right. Let's see if you guys can see this. Not quite. All right, this camera is a little bit offset, so I might have to pull it closer to me to be able to get this chip on there. But I'll try to keep it close enough to you so that you can see him click right into place and go home like a nice little Yangtze chip ship. Seems all right. Now we'll let that cool down for a second and see whether or not. Jesse, put Mike more near you. Uh, is this any better? I really don't have a way to do that. I know that I was looking at my audio stuff and it is, maybe that's a little, that is a little better. Looks a little yellow now. All right, let's do what best practices and uh, Brian said, I think Brian said, yeah, Brian, smart Brian said that you really should do is to see whether or not PP1V8 always is no longer short. Why did we take this chip off? Because PP1V8 always was short and we thought it was probably short under this chip. The board is out of focus. Audio was so bad. <sighs> Good thing you're not one to complain, 70 Turbo Volvo. All right, now let's see. 
PB one V eight always. Are you still short? Yes or no? Let's find out. What? It says yes, I am. Well, that sucks. Boo. I really don't think that it's under that chip. Oh, Brian is is schooled in the art of uh, making a good point. I really don't think that PP1V8 always is short under my beautiful new chip that I just put on. However, um, I should have kind of proven that it was indeed still short before putting that thing on. So now we kind of have a choice. If I can nudge, I mean, if this guy's going to end up having to come off anyway, then so be it, which is really going to suck because that's underfilled and it'll get really dark and then I'll be really tired riding my bike home. It's super late o'clock at night. Uh, I don't know about that. Um, then we can just, we can kind of nudge this guy. I think I will nudge him so that we can see what side of this resistor. All right, let's nudge that guy. We'll have to put him back, but... I have to just nudge him right on off. Things don't nudge off very well when they don't have, when they're not damaged capacitors. Oh, I'd like to nudge him off. Uh, just not worth it. Holy crap, what? Yeah, I got 41,000 photos. All right, we'll have to replace him with a new one. Okay, now let's just prove where PP1VA always is short it would be hilarious if it was like no it's in your new it's in your new yangtze chip is it all right so this side not short this side is short who remembers which side is which? Let's pull back up our buddy ZXW and see ah, where what that means, right? So the side that goes out to the heavily corroded chip that I just replaced, which was the obvious source of that short, because look how ugly it was. However, not this time. Dun -dun -dun -dun. We have PP1V8 always is short on this side of the resistor, which really means it's the PMU, which sucks. And is there any other choice? I don't think so. Wasn't there like some weird cap? Let's go hunt that down. Oh, here's that other resistor. But all of that's on the bottom board, so not even part of our story. So not that... P1B8 always. This is Mango. Oh, yeah. I thought Mango was a lost cause. Uh, Mango was not easy or something. I don't know. I don't know how to fix Mango. Wait, you didn't fix Mango? Come on. I don't remember it. I really don't. All right, let's see. Anything else? Let's flip this top board over. And is there any other shed of possibility? Here we go. There is a cap. One ugly looking cap. Should we bother even to hunt that sucker down when you just know now it's gonna be inside the power management chip? Should we hunt that thing down? What do you guys think in chat? Because location of that guy is underneath this thing. However, it does look like it's been through the world's most disgusting haunted dishwasher. This is a terrible phone. 
I do not. When I when this guy comes in, I'm gonna punch him in the face, unless he's got a really awesome story, which is that he uh, any story other than yeah, I put my phone in the dishwasher. All right, I'm gonna have to let's just put our eyes on this ugly cat because it would suck since I was so convinced that we had a short on PP1B it always under the ugly looking Yangtze chip because of the obvious terrible corrosion that had to be it but no or maybe it was in fact it would be kind of fun to look back it would really stink to replace the underfilled power management chip on this iPhone 10s only to ultimately lift up this thing and find out that there is Yes, ugly looking dude right there. That's totally, that was it all along. That would be even worse. So I will, I will lift this guy up. All right, let's see if we can. Yeah, look at that ugliness. A lot of ugly under here, but not our PP1V8 always cap, but that is quite. All right, what is this? Ryan, I really want you... Look, here, here is a place that you could just lick it, and it, it's really not going to kill you. We need to have some kind of... We need a new challenge that ultimately r results in... And the person who loses the challenge has to taste this and figure out what the hell it is. What do you think? What would it take to get you to determine what is on this phone by tasting it? $250. What? You is I'm kind of tempted to do that. What what that's a very specific yeah. amount. What is that? What is And then I would have enough What do you mean been in a fire? A fire? No. No. It's just like... No, it's not a fire. It's just burned. Like, here's a piece of it that you could, that you could just taste. You know what I think really could happen? I think that you could drive over to David's house, knock on his door... Ask him what the hell this is and make it back here before I fix this phone. And then nobody has to taste it. Okay. Ugly, ugly, ugly under here. Quite ugly. But let's see which one of these guys is the PP1V8 always cap. I don't think it's actually going to... Yeah, let's see. It's the top one there. Beautiful of all of the ugly looking crap. Look at this, of all of the ugly looking crap. That guy, C2909 of PP1V8 Always fame, that guy is the one of the few and only spots on this board that's not totally horrendous. Right there. Okay, so what do we know? Now we're going to be replacing the power management chip. All right, which kind of stinks. All right, here we go. Let's, yeah, all right, that was our only hope, folks, and now we are left with this really gross looking power management chip it is going to have to be replaced, and that will likely cure our PP1B always, and don't forget, we're going to ultimately have to put back our this guy over here as well. All right. Let's think. Is there any other possibility? Not really. Nope. Not anymore. Not with this beautiful brand new looking Yangtze on it. I am kind of curious, though, to see just for fun if our DC power is unchanged. Unchanged. 
still doing the same old little pulse, pulse, pulse. All right. What time is it? Okay, what? Oh, geez. It is 9 p.m. I think that I'm going to do this same stream tomorrow a.m. and finish it. And I think I'm going to try to call up David and see what's going on with it. All right, 9 o'clock. I'm going to put back on the chip that we took off, that guy, because I don't want to forget his orientation. And normally I never put back on a, a chip before, like, you know, you're not going to build and introduce new variables until you until you get everything fixed up. But I don't want to lose that guy because I think he might be important. All right. Okay. I think that's going to be my stopping point for, um, for this thing. Definitely worth a try. Licking chips is a new Jessa face method. Yeah, exactly. What type of liquid damage is that? I will find out. You mark my words. David is going to face the music and tell us what... How much would you charge for a repair of this sort? I would charge the same amount for this repair as I would if it had just some simple problem, right? Because it's all, some things are hard, some things are easy. It's all flat rate, so it's very predictable. You're going to get a quote when you send something in, and it doesn't matter whether it needs this entire thing, this entire board rebuilt. If I have to take the CPU off, then it's going to be a different quote. But everything else is going to be fair game. All right. Um, if only our sense of smell was as good as dogs. Might as well pull everything off at this rate. No, it's just going to be that. Industrial dishwashers clean at extremely hot temperatures to sterilize everything in the unit. Mm, safe right home. All right. I'm going to start streaming in the morning. I'm about to go on vacation on Saturday. So tomorrow is my last day in the shop. So why not do this job uh, on, a, on a stream and finish this up and get to the bottom of it and figure out what the heck happened to this. So this will be part one of iPhone meets commercial dishwasher. Stay tuned tomorrow for part two. And I will see you guys later.